today I, I would like to invite Chong Kong Chong to give us the speech regarding what is the amazing work from the NOTAD. So Chong Kong Chong Kong Chong is the lead of the core research in the NOTAD Inc. He recently he re received the, the bachelor's and the master's degrees in the electronic and electronics engineering from the USA University in 2012 and 2040 recently. So he recently got the PhD degree in the 2019. After that, he researched variable applications using deep learning from the, from the institutes, especially for speech in motion recognition, test of speech, and the speech conversions. His research interest in is to improve the performance of the highway awareness of the AI model optimization technology in various technology, such like the, the image classification, object detection, and the super resolution. Let's welcome to Chong Kong to give a speech on how we aware model optimization in our ESAS U65 MPU. So, Chong Kong. Thank you for introducing me, Odin. Hello, I am Xinku Choi, uh, lead of Nespresso Core Research at Nota AI. First of all, thank you so much for having me here today. It is such a pleasure to present our research work to all of you. Today, I am going to share my experience working with ARM Atos U65 MPU, how we approached it from a hardware aware perspective, and how we could achieve such a result using Nespresso. The number of float point operation flops is a widely used metric to measure computation complexity of the neural network. However, FLOPS is not linear with computing speed or latency. If you take a look at the figure below, you can observe that even the networks with similar FLOPS show different speed. For example, if you look at the red box, you can see that four different networks with the same 150 mega FLOPS have different batches per second. In other words, to design a low latency neural network, you should not be obsessed with improving flops only. For most devices, improvement in metrics like flops or the number of trainable parameters is not directly correlated with the improvement in efficiency of the network. For example, there is a graph comparing fused IBN which replaced each pointwise and depthwise convolution layers with a standard convolution layer. If you see the graph, uh, the leftmost bar and the rightmost bar shows the same latency, while fused IBN has seven times more than parameters than the original depthwise IBN. When other hyperparameters are fixed and only the channel output varies, the computation and memory complexity of a convolution layer, layer is linear. Therefore, the measured latency should also have a linear relationship with the channel output value. However, the latency plot doesn't show a linear li relationship, but a staircase pattern with a step size. The edge devices have different step size according to the characteristics of the hardware. Therefore, when designing an optimized neural network, it is always important to take both the neural network itself and target hardware's characteristics into consideration. In order to study the previous problems, we worked on a virtual environment called ARM Virtual Hardware for using ARM Atos U65 MPU. ARM Virtual Hardware is an evolution on, of ARM's modeling technology. It delivers models of ARM-based processors, systems, and third-party hardware for application developers and SOC designers so that they can build and test the software before silicon and hardware availability. We worked on a fixed virtual platform, 
which is a digital twin of the board with Atos U65 and the Cortex M55. For the device configuration, main units were selected as 256, and the memory mode was selected as dedicated SRAM. So let's take a look at ARM Atos U65 MPU. It is a micro MPU which doubles the machine learning performance of Atos U55 while maintaining U55's energy efficiency. We have selected Atos U65 as we believe that it could help us to contribute to bring AI everywhere. ARM Atos U65 MPU is a microprocessor that specializes in the acceleration of neural network processing. It consists of main unit and element-wise engine as computation units, and its memory is divided into internal memory and external memory. In external memory, SRAM and DRAM operations are performed through an external bus. When someone tries to take the best use out of Atos U65's capabilities, there are two main constraints to keep in mind. One is an activation buffer size, and the other is a size of AI model. For activation buffer size, when the memory mode is set to a dedicated SRAM mode, the RNA cache size of SRAM is limited to 384 kibibytes. In other words, when the activation buffer size exceeds 300, 384 kibibytes, it utilizes a DRAM, resulting in a dramatic increase in latency. Moving on to a model size part, Atos U65 has a memory size of 32 megabytes. The device will not be able to carry out a computation if the sum of the model size and the activation buffer size is bigger than U65's memory size, which is 32 megabytes. Therefore, without considering these two constraints, it is impossible to design an efficient neural network optimized for Atos U65. For a better exam ex examination of Atos U65's characteristics, we ran experiments with several convolution types and building blocks. For convolution, various convolutions such as uh, group convolution, ghost convolution, and blueprint separate convolution are adopted, which are variants of the standard convolution layer. On the block level, we employed fused IBN, uh, fused group convolution IBN, and uh, uh, max pool IBN. To be more specific, fused IBN uh, and fused group convolution IBN are blocks that replace both pointwise convolution and depthwise convolution with standard convolution and group convolution, respectively. And max pool IBN is a variant of IBM that replaces depthwise convolution with mixed pool. We measured how latency on Atos U65 varies according to each different configuration of convolution types and building blocks. First, if you take a look at the bar graph on the left side, it portrays the latencies for four different convolution types and you can clearly observe that the latency changes as height and width and channels value change. In addition, you can also notice that the level of change in latency differs depending on the convolution types. The figure on the right side describes the relative latency of the IBM variational blocks normalized to the latency of the original IBM blocks. If we compare blocks with 32 channels and 64 channels, there is little change in the normalized latency values for fused group convolution IBN and max pool IBN. 
depending on the configuration. However, there is a surge in the normalized latency value for fused IBN in uh, blue color from 1.5 to 3.3, which has increased more than twice. One of the reasons why there was a significant rise in the normalized latency of fused IBN compared to other blocks in, is the increase in max. Replacing point-wise convolution and depth-wise convolution with standard convolution result in larger max. However, it does not fully account in merely effects, which might increase the latency only up to about two, as much as colored on the bar as blue. Then what caused such a drastic shift? The red part, of the bar happened as the activation buffer size exceeded 300, 384 kbytes as the channel size increased up to 64, which led to usage of both SRAM and DRAM at the same time. To sum up, it is important to consider the configuration of blocks in order, in order to achieve a faster inference on the actual device. Next, um, to figure out the step size of the latency staircase pattern, we looked up the documentation and actually measured the step size by experimentation. According to the documentation, the convolution performance depends on the dimension of the tensors being processed. The processing unit for input feature map and output feature map uh, in the channel direction is 32 and 8, respectively. We measured how latency on Atos U65 varies according to the input and output channels on the convolution layer. You can observe that the latencies had the staircase pattern, and the step size was 32 for input channels and 16 for output channels. Therefore, it is important to consider the step size of the latency, st latency staircase pattern to design efficient neural networks on Atos U65. In previous slides, we have covered the importance of taking a hardware-aware approach, the characteristics of ARM Atos U65 MPU, and the relationship between latency and various blocks. Now, I would like to illustrate how we could create a powerful and efficient network optimized specifically for Atos U65. How we could achieve such research and what kinds of tools and methods we used. Nota AI has its unique hardware aware AI optimization platform called Nespresso. Nespresso accelerates the AI model development process by automating the repetitive steps. A user only needs to set a target performance and the target hardware as input, and then it automates uh, the whole process for a user to build an optimized AI model. Nespresso is modularized into three sub-modules, model searcher, model compressor, and model launcher. These three modules help users to build, optimize, and deploy AI models as efficiently and effectively as possible. In this presentation, let's focus on the model compressor, which is the second sub-module. Model compressor is a ready-to-use toolkit automating AI model compression process. When an AI model is given as an input, model compressor performs model profiling, compresses it, and provides the outcome model, which is improved in all aspects such as latency, power consumption, memory footprint, and others. It not only supports various deep learning frameworks, such, such as PyTorch and TensorFlow, but also supports all kinds of convolutional neural network architectures. Model Compressor recommends an optimal configuration for a given model, which enables state-of-the-art performance 
even for users without any AI expertise. Model compressor supports structured pruning as one of the compression methods. The structured pruning removes filters of the convolution layer based on the criteria and returns a model which does not require any particular hardware or software to be accelerated. And the recommendation measures the layer-wise importance for structured pruning and allocates the pruning ratio for each layer at ease. Model compressor also support filter decomposition as another compression method. Filter decomposition is to approximate original weights into lightweight representation via low rank approximations to reduce the computational cost. For example, uh, Tucker decomposition decomposes the convolution with two vector matrices and one small core tensor. And the recommendation easily assign the proper rank ratio for each layer. These are examples of research after applying structured pruning and filter decomposition. As earlier mentioned, you can see that the structured pruning removes uh, filters and the filter decomposition decompose one convolution with three layers. The recommendation of structured pruning and filter decomposition only considers the layer-wise importance according to its criterion. For hardware-aware optimization, the pruning ratio and rank ratio from the recommendation should be adjusted because the latency of the convolution layer had a staircase pattern. If the recommended value is uh, located in the middle of the latency staircase pattern, it should be set to a multiple of the step size. Then the neural network capacity can be increased by increasing the number of operations and uh, the parameters for the same latency. Richard? We are going to share the research for the image classification task, which is one of the most widely used comp computer vision tasks. Um, the data set used is image OOP, and the baseline model is VGG19. Um, on the table, you can see that there is no latency value for the original model. The reason is that when the input image size is set to 224 by 224, the model size of the original VGG19 models become 32 megabytes, which equals the memory size of Atos U65. However, it exceeds the Atos U65's memory size of 32 megabytes when the activation buffer size is added, which leads to out of memory and not being able to run an application. By compressing with Nespresso, the model size could be minimized to about half of the original size so that the sum of the model size and activation buffer size do not exceed 32 megabytes. Only then we could run VGG19 on Atos U65 and measure the latency while maintaining the accuracy declining by only 0.4%. Here are the results obtained from using the CIFA 100 data set. For mobile net we won, Notas Nespresso uh, all significantly decrease max, the number of parameters, and model size, boosting the inference time up to five times only uh, with a tiny drop in accuracy. After the hardware-aware optimization for the latency staircase pattern was applied to Nespresso, 
max were increased with same latency. On top of that, uh, even the accuracy has slightly increased or increased over the original model. In conclusion, with ARM virtual hardware platform and Netpresto together, we were able to produce remarkable optimization results for ARM Metos U65 MPU, both efficiently and effectively. Last not, but not least, I would like to highlight that we are willing to offer free trial, trials to those who visited and watched the, today's presentation. You can come and apply from the link on the slide nespresso.ai. This slide shows what, what, what integrating ARM virtual hardware platform with Nespresso would look like. If you come to Nespresso, you will be able to select the option ARM virtual hardware under target device and optimize AI models for at U65. So if you are interested, you are more than welcome to use them. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thanks. Yeah, it's amazing. So uh, this is such an amazing software. They can improve the, the neural network performance in the highway awareness. So that would be great. So, so, so actually, the Xun Kong, I have a question. So when you're talking about the, the different uh, the AI, like uh, the U55, and I also saw that you have the, some the Rishi Pi or some the JSON. So, so do you have some of the, the, rough, uh, the roughly ideas of compare with the ESUS U65 and, and compare with the, the, the Rishi Pi? How, 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 how bad is the, the performance is the, is the, the 10 times or so is the, is it equally? Or, I don't have an idea. So could you can you give us some elaboration on that? Um. Yeah. Great. Great question. Um. Uh, I think. Uh. The. Uh. Atos uh, um, Atos U sixty five MPU is better than uh, Raspberry Pi, mm. but uh, ARM Atos U sixty five. All uh, uh, have uh, narrow supported operator than Raspberry Pi. So yes. yeah. if if the if the AI model which you used uh, have uh, operator uh, uh, supported in ARM two sixty five is better than ARM two sixty five. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, I got it. So the, the 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 challenge will be the how how many operators you can support, right? For the CPU part, they can widely support all of the network, but for the uh, DLA or MPU, that will be the, some of the limitations on that. So so yeah, that's clear. So is there any? Uh, I also I also have another question so regarding you mentioned about the, some of the latency point of view. So seems like you use the 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 face model, some of the virtual hardware. So do you have some of the, do you have some plan in the future once you got a real chip on the ESUS tube? Uh, are you consider to do the retesting again to verify the, 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 ver the, the simulation number? Mm, yeah, um, uh, I, I, I worked on a virtual platform. So the, results in this presentation may be changed uh, when uh, studying on real device at, at the CU65 MPU. But, but maybe uh, I, I hope uh, the, we, we obtain the uh, same results. Yes, okay. Okay, got it. Now, thanks, thanks for your sharing. So yeah. Uh, Thanks again for your joining. This is a very impressive talk. So I think based on the Notas AI, people can more easier to deploy the more complex network in the, the resource constraint device. So thank you. A final thank you to our sp sponsors. So once again, thank you, um, Edge Impulse as premier sponsor, Qualcomm, Sintiet, DeepLight, ClickTech, Renaissance. 
Um, actually, what I'll do is I will go through because we, we, it will cover all the, the sponsors in detail. So the premier sponsor, Edge Impulse, um, for those who have uh, like to try a simple approach to, um, I guess, development on tiny mail devices, Edge Impulse is a great solution for you. Um, executive sponsors, Qualcomm AI Research, again, uh, a great organization that has most of the chips in most of the um, platforms around the world, um, and as well as some of their new software applications. Sintiet making edge AI a reality. Platinum sponsors, DeepLight, uh, fastest video analytics solutions on ARM CPUs. ClickerTech, global IIT solutions. Renesas, uh, I guess enabling a next generation of AI powered solutions that will revolutionize every industry sector. Sony Semiconductors Corporation. Gold sponsors, analog devices, where what if becomes what is. Um, again, um, um, uh, large chipset provider as well, and they also have their own social um, nights, which you can join if you want to be more involved in the ARM community. Photohub, uh, making over-the-air firmware models uh, updates simple and accessible, uh, especially important with all the uh, sensors that require updates. Microsoft, uh, providing, I guess, edge computing and the, the, the capabilities to integrate into um, edge or IoT or tiny ML solutions into uh, the Azure platform. NXP, uh, again, a great hardware provider which integrates with uh, the tiny ML solutions. SenseML, an analytics toolkit suite for, um, for I guess, tiny ML. STM Microelectronics, which provides extensive solutions to make machine learning easy. Engineering Exceptional Synaptics, uh, Engineering Exceptional Experiences. And Silver Sponsors, AIZIP, Aon Devices, EMSA, Greenwaves, Gravity, IBM, Imagimob, Atermus, Nota AI, OctoML, Prophecy, Quixo, Rexon, SAP, Silicon Labs, Stream Analyze, TDK. Um, I guess before I finish off, though, if, if people are interested in sponsoring, please reach out to the team. Um, we're always happy to have uh, more sponsors because it's with this sponsorship we can run such, such events. Um, I just want to say a big thank you once again to the whole team. Um, and thank you once again to the people who presented. Um, your content is key to making these communities grow. We're hoping uh, next year we can have this in person. Uh, don't forget, as we mentioned earlier, uh, next, next year we'll be having the summit um, in San Fran. Um, but thank you. Thank you for all your help and uh, hopefully see you at the next tiny mail session. Thank you, everyone.